Hi there, Norman with iSaveTractors.com. In this video, I'm going to be showing you how to measure the cylinder bore of your Kohler K-Series engine. Now, before we start measuring, let's go over some of the tools we're going to need uh, to do this. What we're going to need is a 3 to 4 inch micrometer. I like to use a dial caliper just to double check my measurements. And I also use an expanding uh, bore gauge right here. Now, in order to show you how to measure with the telescoping bore gauge, we first have to kind of go over the anatomy of what makes up this particular tool. Uh, on both ends of this bore gauge are these two spring-loaded plungers here. They will spring uh, open and closed. And then on the bottom is a little tightening screw. And what this tightening screw does is when you turn it clockwise and you tighten it up, it actually holds these plungers in place. So if I were to squish them, turn the tightening screw, when I let go, as you can see, uh, it does not spring open. And when I release the set screw, it springs open like that. Uh, another important part is the faces of these plungers on both ends are curved, are uh, con uh, cave or convex, I believe. Convex, maybe, is the word I'm looking for. Uh, but they're curved outward. Uh, I'm going to try to get it on camera for you. Try to focus it so you can see. If you can see that, they are slightly curved. And that also pays, plays a very important role in taking measurements. Uh, what we're going to do is we're going to put this bore gauge into the cylinder of the engine. Uh, we're going to put it in so it's uh, kind of tilted, so it's touching the side of the cylinder walls and tilted. What that does is pretend these parts of my fingers are the edge of the cylinder wall. It's going to put it on the smallest, or I should say the, it makes for the largest measurement is what I'm saying. Uh, since it's on the kind of lowest part of the curved on both plungers, it makes it so these will expand to its uh, largest point in the cylinder bore. What you're going to do after that is you're going to gently tighten the locking screw on the tool, and then you're going to tilt this plunger, uh, you're going to tilt the whole tool in an arc. And what that's doing is it's going to compress the plungers until they're at the smallest measurement because it hits kind of the peak of the curve part on both ends of the plunger. And when you continue uh, turning this tool, since you tighten this lock screw, once the bore, once the plungers here are at their measurement, they're going to stay locked there because you tighten the tool. And as you continue uh, rotating the tool around, it's uh, the cylinder is going to leave contact with the the tops of the plunger, and then you'll be able to remove the tool. Let me demonstrate for you. So here's our cylinder. Here's our tool. To take a measurement, you're going to put the tool in, into the cylinder, kind of in a, in a tilted fashion. You're going to feel both uh, plungers make contact with the side of the cylinder walls. You're going to tighten this screw. You're going to rotate it like that. And then you're going to remove it from the cylinder bore. So again, you're going to put it in. You're going to tilt it like this, in this fashion, and pull it out. So pretend it's in the cylinder bore. You're going to turn it like this and pull it out. Okay, so before we record our measurement, let's just go over again what we're going to be measuring. Again, we're going to be taking six measurements. We're going to be taking three. Uh, we'll, call the, we'll call the two axes X and Y. So X is going to go in this direction. Y is going to go in this direction. Uh, now we're going to take three measurements. One, two, three. And they're going to be at different depths of the engine. Now, measurement one, you want it to be about uh, an inch and a half from the top. And then the second one, you want it to be in the middle of the cylinder. And the third measurement, you want it to be uh, towards the bottom of the cylinder. And you're going to do that both for X and Y. So the first measurement I just took is on the, I, is on the X axis, and that is measurement one. Okay, now it's time to transfer the measurement from this expanding bore gauge over to our calculations. In order to do that, I'm going to be using a micrometer for this. Now, to transfer the measurement of the micrometer, you want to turn this thimble counterclockwise until it's larger than the telescoping bore gauge. You're going to put it around the bore gauge, making sure you line it up carefully with the, the largest part of the plungers on the bore gauge. 
That way you can get your most accurate measurement. I like to put the bore gauge elevated on like a piece of plywood a little bit. Uh, it just makes lining up the calipers a lot easier. When you get it lined up, you're going to turn this thimble gently clockwise, tightening everything up, and you want to make sure you keep everything aligned. You're going to tighten it up until it gently clicks on the outside of the plunger of the bore gauge. You don't want to push it too hard because you might run the risk of uh, collapsing the bore gauge a tiny bit, throwing off your measurement. When you get that measurement, you're going to lock it in place by turning this little lever and then you're going to release the bore gauge from it. Now if we were to look at the measurements here, this is a caliper that measures between three and four inches. Let me try to get it in focus for you. Three and four inches. So we know the first part of our measurement is 3.00. And if we come over these thimbles here, this thimble, you'll see a bunch of uh, hash marks right uh, written on the thimble there. Each of those large digits that you can see on screen uh, equates to a tenth of an inch or 0 0.1000. So that first line with one if the thimble stopped there, it would be 3.10 as the measurement, the 2, 3.20, and so on. Each of, the, each of the hash marks on the outer part of the thimble right here represent one thousandths of an inch. And each of the little dash lines in between the large digits at my fingertips equals uh, 25 thousandths of an inch, or 0 0.025. So to transfer this measurement, I like to take this into three parts. The first part we know is three inches, 3.00. And then we're going to go over to this thimble and look to see where the last number exposed is. And you can see right here that is five. So the second part of our measurement is 0 0.50. And then we're going to go over to these hash marks on the other end, which is one thousandths of an inch, and see where the hash mark lines up with this uh, horizontal line right above my fingertip. And as you can see, it's actually at the zero. So that's zero thousandths of an inch. Now, if this thimble were turned a little bit more, you would add up whatever thousandths of an inch were, uh, were lined up. So in this case, it is three inches plus 0 0.50 plus 0 0.000, which is three and a half inches. On a piece of paper, it looks something like this. Let me see if I can get this into a uh, screen for you. So our first part of our measurement was 3.000 plus 0 0.500 plus 0 0.000, which gives us a, a measurement of... Now the new cylinder dimensions on a Kohler K241, uh, I'm sorry, K321 is right here. So it's between 3.44 I'm sorry, it's between 3.4995 and 3.5005. And our measurement is 3.50. So the first measurement on the x-axis is within uh, factory specification. So that's good. Let's continue on with our measurements and we'll see where we go. So our second measurement on the x-axis, as you can see, is once again at 3.50. So I'm going to record that and take our third measurement on the x-axis. Third measurement on the x-axis, also 3.500. So we've taken our six measurements. Here they are, the three measurements at the three different depths on the x-axis, three different measurements on the y-axis. The Kohler specifications say the size of the cylinder bore uh, for a new size is between 3.5005 and 3.4995 inches. Uh, and the maximum wear limit that we want to see is actually 3.503. So as you can see, our measurements of 3.50, 3.50, uh, in both X and Y indicates that it is within specifications uh, and will not need machining. So this cylinder is actually in great shape. As you can see, there's no deviation between the X and the Y axis as well. Uh, both, all the measurements are three and a half inches uh, everywhere. Now, if there was a difference uh, to determine out of round and, and taper, what you would do is you would take the difference uh, in order to calculate taper, for example, 
a taper is a difference in the cylinder bore uh, as you go deeper into the cylinder. So it would be the difference between measurements 3 and 1 uh, on the y-axis and then th the difference between the measurement and 3 and 1 on the x-axis. That's how you would determine taper. To determine out of round, you would take the difference between each measurement at each depth between the x and the y axis. So it would be y minus x. In this case, 3.5 minus 3.5 equals 0. So there's 0 uh, out of round. Now the specifications and the Kohler manual, the maximum out of round they want to see on this engine is 0 .003 or 3 thousandths of an inch. And the max taper is point zero zero two or two thousandths of an inch so if the difference in my measurements between x and y was greater than point zero zero three uh, i would know that i would have to resize the cylinder bore uh, with a machine shop as well as if the difference between the third measurement and the first measurement in both the x and y axis was greater than 0 .002 for taper, that would also indicate that I would have to take my block to a machine shop. Now in the case of this particular uh, example engine, the measurements are good. I will not need to machine it. What I'm going to do is I'm going to replace the piston and the piston rings. And when I replace it, I'm going to uh, re-hone the cylinder to give it a crosshatch pattern. And we're going to cover that in a different video. Just want to give you a quick clarification on the measurements I've written down. Uh, I just realized that on the video, it doesn't show that I show the thousandths of an inch measurement. Uh, so just to clarify, all my measurements were this right here. So it's 3.500. And on the other uh, four measurements, I got the same exact thing, and I just didn't write it down. Uh, so to be more accurate, I'm going to add another zero here. So our taper and our out of round is all 0 .000. As you can see on my micrometer, it is uh, 3.500. Uh, all the way. So it's 3.500. You can see on the thousands. If I were to go uh, tens of thousands, uh, it would be these hash marks right here, and it also lines up with the zero. It's hard to see on the camera. So this, uh, at its most accurate measurement, is 3.500. Uh, I hope that video on how to measure the cylinder bore on your Kohler K series engine was helpful. Please check us out online at isavetractors.com. We're quickly becoming the number one source for new aftermarket parts for vintage Kohler K-Series engines, Tecumseh, HH engines, as well as Briggs & Stratton cast iron engines. Please subscribe to this channel for more videos on like this, how-to videos, as well as other videos of garden tractors at work and some of the rebuilds and restorations I do here in the shop. Thanks for watching.